sleep and you can play Dom Team Death, the free for all, CTF and sabotage. Man, I play them all from search up to headquarters, down the list of demolition. Objectively speaking, to win is my only mission. If I sin, it's not by omission of all. Hey YouTubers, this is Hardcore Gamer for Life, and today I'd like to readdress a topic that I spoke very briefly about here a couple of videos back, and that is the topic of YouTube standards, more specifically gameplay standards. Now back in the day, about three or four years ago, when this whole gameplay commentary scene on YouTube was getting its start, standards were really non-existent. People were just sort of figuring this whole thing out back then and didn't really have the thought in their mind, oh well, a good gameplay has to have a 10kd or better, or I have to be full out rushing all the time, or things of that sort. Yes, of course they were ultimately going to pick what they felt were their best gameplays, but they never had questions like, oh, will people not like this video because I was playing defensively or because I was using a really good weapon? No one worried about that kind of stuff. People posted the gameplays they felt were the most entertaining slash instructional slash funny or whatever and talked over it. And back then, commentary was mostly about the gameplay. Now obviously, a lot has changed since then. Nowadays, very few commentators regularly talk about the gameplay. I try to buck that trend in my videos. I like to talk class setup, tactics, map knowledge, weapons. It's what first drew me to this community nearly three years ago and is now largely absent from most commentaries. And I know people still enjoy that sort of thing because I really get some great feedback from people telling me that they really like that I usually talk about the gameplay because it's something the community has really gotten away from. It's almost an unwritten rule, thou shalt not talk about the gameplay. Yet that's what draws the great majority of newcomers to our community. Do you really think that someone who's never heard of a gameplay commentary is going to be searching Call of Duty videos on the internet looking to be exposed to White Boy's sparkling personality or the Mark of Jay's energetic braggadocio or the wit and raw sarcasm of Eat My Diction? No, of course not. While they may opt to continue viewing for those reasons, the fact is most new members of this community will enter it as a result of them searching for info on how to get better at the game. All the other stuff comes later. That's why channels like X-Jaws are so successful. It's not that he has some amazing personality or that he puts out extremely polished content. His videos rarely have much production value, but he makes the general focus of his channel about how to get better at Call of Duty and does a lot of talking about the gameplay, which, as I said, you won't find much of in the community these days. Another major difference between then and now is, as I mentioned earlier, the rise of gameplay standards. Nowadays, if a gameplay doesn't have at least a 10kd or you use a really good gun or play it all defensively, there's a good chance that you're going to catch some flack over it in the comments section. The elitist attitude this has fostered has made YouTubers really walk on eggshells as far as the type of gameplays that they post. Or, if they do post a gameplay that has some defensive play or uses a powerful gun, you'll often hear them apologizing throughout the entire commentary. I think we as YouTubers have become way too thin-skinned about this stuff. I think we just need to post up what we're going to post up and not be apologetic about it. That teaches new people in the community to go into online matches and constantly bitch about the weapons, tactics, and strategies others use because, according to popular YouTube opinion, if you're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off using either an M16, a PKP, a chin egg, or a PM9 with a USP45 secondary, then you're somehow playing cheap. It's a regularly noted phenomenon how the video game generation quote unquote grew up and went from playing Mario and Crash Bandicoot to games like Halo and Call of Duty, but sometimes listening to the chat in online lobbies, it's pretty obvious a lot of them skip the whole growing up bit. I mean, in all reality, what is the point of bitching and moaning about someone else's gun choice, tactics, etc.? It accomplishes nothing other than making yourself look like a tool and a whiner. You know, either adapt to what the other person is doing or leave the lobby. It's that simple. I'm not saying I don't get annoyed by the way others play the game from time to time. I get just as annoyed as the next guy when I run into an entire team of RPG users or rampant FMG 9s, but rather than cry like a little baby that just had its lollipop stolen and make myself sound like a complete ass, if it annoys me that much, I'll just leave the game. The fact is the other person paid for their game just like I did mine, and it's perfectly within their rights to use whatever weapons, tactics, and strategies they choose, and if I'm not skilled enough to counter that, that's not really their fault, it's mine. I like to use shotguns a lot, and invariably, when I use the Spaz 12, I'm told how cheap my weapon selection is. With a Spaz. This just goes to show you, it doesn't matter what you use, people are going to bitch. So I say we should just use whatever we want to use, and for the love of Pete, let's stop being apologetic about it. We as a community brought about these standards, and I think now it's our duty as a community to publicly denounce them. 
If you're a YouTuber, particularly one with a large subscriber base, watching and listening to this, I challenge you to make a commentary denouncing the elitism and ridiculous so-called standards that have arisen within the last couple of years here in the Call of Duty community. When I first started doing this well over two years ago, those standards were just starting to come into being, but they weren't accepted so widely as they are now, and I certainly had no concept of them myself. When I posted gameplays, I set the standard by what was entertaining to me, and by the quality of gameplays I was able to get on a consistent basis, and that, I feel, is the way it ought to be. Now don't get me wrong, I believe standards are a good thing to some degree. I just don't think they should be used by people as a tool of ridicule and as a means to shift responsibility for their mistakes away from themselves and onto someone else's tactics, weapon choice, etc. I believe standards should be set by the individual, not by the community. Is a Ken Burton or a Junkyard going to have the same standards as an XCAL or CNNers? Of course not, otherwise they'd never put out a video. Obviously, each commentator is going to set the standard for themselves, according to the level that they play at, which is as it should be. Instead of having a standard set for them by the community, which quite frankly for many players is simply unrealistic. The fact is we all differ as gamers, but it's not just the guys with a 4.5 KD that have something to offer the community. I've garnered just as much, if not more enjoyment at times watching commentators like The Sideshow or Quake Beats, whose gameplay is good but generally not beastly, than watching an X-Jaws or Mark of J video where they just go ham on a public lobby. Both are enjoyable to watch, but for different reasons, and I'd neither want nor expect the first two to hold themselves to the same standards, gameplay-wise, as the second two. Now, this is a video response to my friend Hectic Fusion's recent commentary on YouTube standards. Check out his channel in the description below, and I'd like to address a point he made about the type of gameplay that he felt less skilled players prefer to see. He made the assumption that, since they can't get the really high-scoring gameplays themselves, that they go on YouTube to see others get those really high scores. To be fair, he also said there are those that go on strictly for the entertainment value and don't really care about the gameplay as long as there's something going on in the background to keep them occupied. I would posit that there's also a third group, one which I belonged to in the beginning, and to be honest, still do to some degree. And that is people who come looking for tips, strategies, loadouts, ways to improve their game. These people are looking for neither the personality slash entertainment factor some commentators provide, nor the uber beastly gameplays of guys like Incredible Orb or Fearcrads. The first group doesn't really teach good gameplay, and for a novice player, trying to learn from the second group is like an elementary school student trying to learn vector calculus. It's just not duplicatable by your average player, especially if they're a newbie to boot. I learned more about how to play the game from Wings of Redemption than I ever did from X Jaws or the Mark of J, both of whom are superior to him in gameplay, but their style, unlike Wings, is not easily duplicatable, nor do they have his beautifully simple way of breaking down and explaining gameplay elements so the less skilled among us can easier understand and apply them than he does. He's just a superb teacher, that's one of Wings' strong points, and I actually think that these sort of players make up the majority of the new people coming into the community. I know it was the reason that I started searching Call of Duty videos on YouTube, and given the fact that the majority of shooter gamers are average or below average in skill, it seems to follow that many of them begin to do so for the same reasons. I think that it's a better and more reasonable way to welcome them into the community by actually teaching them how to play the game, rather than teaching them to go online and bitch, moan, and complain about nearly every gun and tactic that's used against them. Which is why I believe we as a community should take the initiative in publicly denouncing the elitist attitudes fostered by this unrealistic and arbitrary set of standards which has over the last couple of years been foisted on us as a community, partially by ourselves due to our own ignorance and pride and the natural tendency to not accept responsibility for our own mistakes and instead finding something or someone else to blame it on, overpowered weapons, cheap tactics, etc. We're getting older as a community. Let's show it and grow up, accept responsibility for our own mistakes, and each set our own individual standards according to who we are and what we're capable of, not just what some very vocal members of the community arbitrarily claim as the standard. I firmly believe that they don't make up the majority of this community, and I'm not even going to say who I'm talking about here. You guys know, and there's no need to give them any publicity. That's what they're looking for. I feel it's our duty, not just as content creators, but also those who are just viewers and subscribers, to denounce these idiots wherever we see them. Not in a hateful way, that's the response they want, but with logic and reason. Nothing pisses them off more. If we want to make this community a better place, we have to be every bit as vocal as them and endeavor just as much or more to spread tolerance and goodwill as they do to spread hate and ignorance. Besides, there's nothing more fun than trolling a troll. Intelligently, mind you, because they very rarely know how to deal with that. And besides, if you respond to hate with hate, are you really making the community a better place? I don't think so. 
So guys, I welcome your feedback on this topic. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. I needed two free-for-alls to go over all this, and I tried to pick ones that went with the topic. In other words, gameplays that don't fit typical YouTube standards of the giant KD and hard mode weapons, but that I still found entertaining. In the case of the game on Dome, where I come back from a major deficit and destroy the rest of the lobby, and on this one, despite my average score, I particularly liked the final kill cam. A nice two-piece with one of them being a juggernaut. It was my first game of yesterday. As always, thanks so much for viewing. Please rate, comment, and and if you're new and you enjoyed it, subscribe for more. This has been Hardcore Gamer for Life, suggesting the radical idea that we just go out there and have a good time and not worry about how others are playing or what they think. Have a great day, guys. Keep it on the dial where you know that it's hot. Cause you know that on my channel I upload a lot of videos of all different types of varieties. Gameplays, mini tashes, live comms, defense, and comedy bits. Ain't no playlist titled greatest hits, not yet, but you can bet.